in Saskatoon, and we we are organized as a separate people group in Canada, and we have a separate identity. Even though we have a we're, we're, we walk in unity, we walk together with the First Nations and the Inuit because we're part of the First Nations. Now, and this the Inuit. is a question I've got. You, you brought it up, okay? So <laughs> I'm just following it up. You say unity. Mm -hmm. Be honest with me, guys. Is there unity within the First Nations in Canada, or is there disunity? I mean, when I, when I read the history of First Nations, I see sometimes clashes between this group and that group, and a uh, difference of opinion with regard to uh, uh, practice of religion. I see territorial disputes. Um, is there unity today? I think we desire unity. Uh, in, working with the, in working with youth in Saskatoon, I have spent many years working with the uh, different organizations where their purpose is to work with First Nations, Inuit and Métis uh, youth. And our, always our desire is to be able to work together, to be able to bring uh, cultural awareness and understanding, education. And uh, we have that desire, but we don't always necessarily agree on the same principles, the same way of doing things. And part of that is also because of our diverse backgrounds. Now, you just finished your Bachelor of Education, right? Yes. Now, is your plan to be a teacher? Yes. That'll be what, a high school teacher? Uh, elementary, yeah. middle years. And uh, when will you start teaching? Um, I can start teaching anytime. How's that feel? Oh, that's uh, very, very good. <laughs> Do you want to stay in Saskatchewan? Uh, well, I have my teaching certification for Saskatchewan at the moment, so it would be, that would be one place that I'd be able to teach. Huh. Now, Sarah, uh, you're last but not least. Yes. I, I, I put these guys ahead of you because you were so nervous. <laughs> now, now you're relaxed, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're also the, the prettiest of us all here for, by a long shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was reading a bit of your bio, mm. and I was quite intrigued because um, you're doing so well now. You're doing, you're doing great, according to your own writing. But uh, you didn't have the best start mm. in life. No. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Well, I was adopted and, uh, from birth. And my mother was a Cree woman. And she had a hard life. Um, she dealt with a lot of brokenness. And so she was into uh, prostitution and addiction. And because of that, um, I was born actually a heroin addicted baby. And so I had to struggle, like, for my life at birth. Um, the doctors basically labeled, they said I would be a vegetable. Um, in the womb, a part of my body was paralyzed, so the muscle tone wasn't developing. Um, just different things they said, you know, I would have learning disabilities. But my mother and many people across Canada prayed for me. And here I am today. I do not have learning disabilities. My muscles work fine. And I, I, I lived. I was also born premature, and I'm not the tiniest today. <laughs> you, you said in what you wrote that um, you grew up uh, not really loving yourself mm -mm. because of your, uh, your, your, your Cree uh, identity. Yeah. Uh, being even ashamed of uh, other First Nations people, right. dyeing your hair, wearing blue, blue contact, contact lenses. Yeah. Um, would you say that this is typical of uh, other young girls and guys, or was this just your issue? I think it was, it has been a typical thing. Um, a lot of us as youth are struggling with that because we're carrying a shame. And I believe it's a generational shame. Um, and it does go back to what has happened in history. Um, I can't blame my self-hatred on history. Uh, I can't blame my, you know, dyeing my hair blonde or wearing blue contacts. But I believe there was a, a brokenness that came through the generations. And many of the youth, you know, we did not want to go into the stereotypes. Um, and I was ashamed, you know, I didn't want to associate with my people. And so I tried to cut it off. And I believe a part of it was because I grew up around non-First Nations. So right off the bat, you know, I judged them. Uh, I judged my people. And as the Lord began to heal me, it was almost instant. I fell in love with my people. And once I, you know, you, you can't love your neighbor unless you love yourself. And so, yeah. Now you say the Lord began to heal you. And I want to ask all three of you this. But let's start with you. Okay. What does that mean? How, how is it that the Lord even became a part of your life? And secondly, how is it that he's healed this? I mean, we're talking about a serious issue. Yes. 
and, and you're, you're absolutely transformed. Yes. How, 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 and, uh, how did this happen? Uh, well, I accepted the Lord around four years old, but I still you know, struggled and dealt with different things. And it was in my teenage years, it was only a year ago, um, where He really took me on this journey of freedom um, in my personal life, a journey of healing. Uh, I went up north in British Columbia for a conference and I was invited to a house meeting and uh, it was full of First Nations people and this is the first time I ever you know got in contact with First Nations people like I my really? whole life yeah I never knew any growing up you know I never went to a church meeting so I we're was, talking a year ago yes last May I, I shouldn't ask a woman this but how old are you I'm 20 I'm turning 21 so 19. when you were 19 yes 19 is when my life began to be transformed and so we were just in a house and I walked in and it was just all these beautiful native people. And I walked in and I was like, oh, what am I doing here? And, but they carried so much love and they carried an anointing. And they just said, come sit down, we wanna pray for you. And I was still scared. I was like, what, what's gonna happen, you know? And they just came around me and they, they began to just pray for me. And in their language, they said, you know, gala, gala. And that means to come back, come back to who you are. And I can say my life was changed in an hour. It was like a deliverance, you know, I wept and I wept. And, and in that time I repented to them. I said, would you forgive me for hating you, for hating our people? And as I cried, my blue contacts came out my eyes <laughs> with the tears, you know, and it was transforming. And it was like in that hour, I, I so fell in love with my people. That reminded me of that biblical reference to the scales falling off yeah, the eyes. Exactly. Uh, it was like uh, once you were blind, now you see. Yes, exactly. How about you, Steve? Uh, do, do you have similar complexes uh, in your growing up years? To uh, can you relate to this? In, in more than one way, yeah. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, I, I was, uh, you know, just ashamed of being different and, and being Inuit, right? And just